Hey, how's it going guys? This is Dave2D and this is a video on the Lenovo IdeaPad 710S. So this was a product that was designed to compete against the best Ultrabooks on the market right now. So things like the XPS 13, the Razorblade Stealth, but the Lenovo comes in a package that's thinner, lighter, and cheaper. Let's take a look. It comes in a fairly compact box. You get the laptop inside, some paperwork, and a one-piece power adapter. So there's no flip out prongs or anything. It's just a simple wall plug. The base model runs a Skylake Core i5 and it's priced at seven to $800 depending on sales. A similarly equipped XPS 13 runs around $1,000 and so does a Razorblade Stealth, but that comes with a faster Core i7 processor and all of these have eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. The exterior materials that Lenovo went with are magnesium and aluminum. The top surface is magnesium with some aluminum. It has a little more flex to it than the XPS 13 lid, but it still feels solid. The bottom panel is aluminum and you can remove some screws, including the ones underneath the rubber strip, and then you have access to the internals. The RAM is soldered on. This one has eight gigs, it goes up to 16 gigs, but the M2 drive is replaceable. The chassis of the device feels pretty durable. The keyboard area doesn't have too much bend, but the screen shows a little bit of flex if you put your back into it. The hinge mechanism is well made. It does need two hands to open it though. Now, I think most of the price difference is reflected in the build quality. The Lenovo is like two or $300 cheaper than the XPS 13 or the Razorblade Stealth. The build quality isn't bad. It's actually really good, especially for something this thin and this light. But you can see that with the reduction in weight, if you put torsion on the screen or if you're accidentally putting pressure on the top panel, it doesn't have the same stiffness as the XPS 13, but just get a case for it, treat it well, and it won't be an issue. In terms of connectivity, it's a little bit light on ports. There's an SD card slot, micro HDMI, a pair of USB 3 ports, audio jack, and a system restore switch. There's no Thunderbolt 3 ports, so there's no external GPU connections. Okay, opening it up, the keys on the keyboard are really nice. I'd say it's one of the better typing experiences on an Ultrabook. Backlit, 1.35 millimeter travel, nice feedback. If you're a Mac user, you'll adapt to this keyboard quickly. The one thing that bugs me though is the shift key on the right side of the keyboard. I know there's some people who only use the left shift, but when I first started using this keyboard, I would hit the up arrow instead of the shift key. I got used to it, but until you develop the muscle memory to hit this smaller key, be prepared for typos. The glass trackpad is a good size. Texture isn't as smooth as I'd like it. It's bigger than the XPS 13 trackpad, but it has an ELAN driver, so tracking isn't perfect. There's the occasional skip, gestures work well, the buttons are good, and overall I'd say the trackpad experience is on par with the XPS 13. The screen has thin side bezels, like the Infinity display on the XPS 13. The top bezel is a little thicker because it has a webcam in a more traditional spot. The XPS webcam always filmed from that low up your nose angle. This one's more normal. The display panel itself is nice. It's 1080p, it's bright at 320 nits. It has good color accuracy and viewing angles and combined with the matte finish and that thin bezel, it's a great screen. The speakers are on the bottom. They're JBL branded and you get Dolby software for it. They don't have much bass, but they sound clear and they get pretty loud or at least louder than you think they would on a laptop this thin. Drive speeds are pretty mediocre. The review unit I have here has 128 gig M2 SATA drive. The read speeds are okay, but the write speeds are kind of sluggish. Fortunately, you can replace it with a faster PCIe drive if you want. System performance is otherwise good. It's got a Skylake i5 with integrated HD 520 graphics. You won't have any issues with work or media consumption, and it can kind of handle some lightweight gaming if you want. So something like CSGO or even Overwatch, if you crank all the settings down, you can hit like 50, 60 frames per second at lowest resolution. It doesn't look the best, but you can still get some games in in the middle of a lecture if you want. If you want to edit 1080p videos, it can handle it no problem. Just make sure to get an external drive for your media. If you want to do 4K videos, uh, I wouldn't do it on this one. There's no abnormal thermal throttling, but remember I'm running the base model. Thermally, it runs at pretty average temperatures. At max load, it doesn't get uncomfortable or anything, even when you're using it on your lap. Fan noise is also very reasonable on load, nothing too loud. There's a 46 watt hour battery on the inside, it takes around two hours to charge, a little bit less, and I'm getting around six to seven hours of regular use. Okay, Lenovo IdeaPad 710S, a thin and light ultrabook with respectable build quality. It's made with magnesium and aluminum. It has a 13 inch IPS panel. It's bright with pretty good color gamut and the side bezels are nice and thin. The backlit keyboard is very responsive and nice to type on, but the right shift key takes time to get used to. The glass trackpad is roomy and nice to use. On the inside, the Skylake processor is plenty powerful for work and even for some light gaming and is properly cooled. 
The base model storage is pretty slow on write speeds, but it is user replaceable. The eight gigs of RAM are soldered on. And then there's a 46 watt hour battery that'll last you around seven hours. So overall, this is a great device. It's a thin and light ultrabook that still has a focus on affordability. Now it has to make some compromises to keep that price down. So things like the chassis strength and the drive speeds, those aren't fantastic, but if you're looking for a thin and light ultrabook and you have a tighter budget, take a look at this one, you might like it. That's the end of this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. It's been nice. See you guys next time.